Oh boy. Thank you. My name is Mikko. Good afternoon. Nordic Goddamn Business Forum. We've heard a lot about the future. We've heard a lot about the state of the world today. And we've heard a lot about AI, artificial intelligence, generative systems, and so forth. But what does it all really mean for you? What should you be thinking about these things? What should you be doing personally in your life and inside your company or enterprise? That's what we'll talk about. The key question that I keep thinking about is, is why it seems to be happening right now. I started programming in the 1980s. I've been working with computer networks and internet all my life. And we've been speaking about this revolution and it just didn't happen. And now it did. 2023, 2022. Suddenly everything is happening. And this is really weird. It's weird because the first time I read about artificial intelligence was when I read this magazine. This is Technikan Maailma, a Finnish popular science magazine, number 4, 1983. This magazine is over 40 years old. I was 13 years old when I read this magazine, and it has an eight-page article about machine learning and artificial intelligence, 40 years ago. And the forecasts they make in this 40-year-old magazine are fairly accurate. They, they speak about how one day we'll have the capability of teaching these massively large systems and they will become intelligent. So it did really require three different revolutions. The first revolution, so far the biggest revolution of our time in technology world, which is the internet. I set up the first website for our company in April 1994, and, and I remember how we suddenly realized that the world is opening up. The internet deletes geography. No more borders, no more distances, no more geography. But even more than that, it turned everything, all the information, into data. Before the internet, news was physical. You can't use this for machine learning, because it's analog, it's on paper. Well, you can still buy newspapers on paper, but of course the information is already available, also available as data. Same thing with books, of course. Sure, you can buy a physical book, but you know that it has been digitized. And we've gone back and digitized all the old newspapers and old books as well. And more and more of the information is digital only. So, Machine learning can be so much more powerful because we have things to teach to these algorithms. First revolution of the three, the internet revolution. Second, well, we need a place to store all this data. Now, we have the place to store all this data. We call it the cloud. It's part of the internet revolution, the fact that we now have capability of storing massively large data sets and have them accessible. So all the human knowledge is data, and we can store it and keep it online. And then you combine it with the third and the most important revolution. Power. Computing power. And this is insane. It is like magic. The fact that we have supercomputers in our pockets, the fact that we humans are capable of building this. That's a close-up image of a chipset, a three nanometer chipset. So what does it mean when we say three nanometer? TSMC in Taiwan is right now using technology from ASML to build three nanometer chips. Some of you have iPhone 15s in your pockets. That's three nanometer technology. What it really means is that you draw a diagram of a chipset, something like that. Then you use lithography, using light, actually laser, to burn that image onto silicon dye, and that creates a chipset. The problem we have is that the lines are so close to each other, there's only three nanometers between them. How little is that? Well, a human hair, one hair, is 100,000 nanometers. So this is tiny, tiny, tiny. 
it's even harder when you realize that the wavelength of a laser is around 400 nanometers. A laser won't fit through. So if you have this drawing and you want to burn it on silicon dye with light, light doesn't go through. You end up with a totally black thing. So, so how do you do this? Well, like I said, it's insane. The way they do it in these factories that create the chipsets in our pockets is that they take a tiny droplet of tin, suspend that droplet in midair, then hit it with powerful lasers, turning that droplet into plasma. Then they use that plasma as a lens and shoot lasers through that lens, which denses the light narrow enough that it barely fits through these drawings, which are three nanometers wide. If that sounds insane, to make it even more insane, they do this 50,000 times a second. And this, my friends, this is the hardest thing to do in the world. Nothing is as hard as this. Costs more than anything else to build things like this. It's so hard, almost no one can do it. And the end result is this. That's NVIDIA H100. That's the thing which fuels the revolution around us. That's the thing that all the frontier AI companies are using to teach their massively large generative AI models. The computing power we have at our disposal is insane. The thing that you have in your pocket right now, regardless if it's an iPhone or an Android device, that thing 20 years ago would have been on the top 500 list. Top 500 is the list of the 500 fastest supercomputers on the planet. Supercomputers are the size of a truck or maybe two trucks. They run on generators. The thing you have in your pocket costs a couple of hundred euros and it runs on a battery. The world is changing very fast. And the computing power changing it is maybe the biggest important, the most important thing. And the answer to the reason or the question, why now? Now, technology and the revolutions enabling all this is one thing, but we still needed breakthrough in research and science. And I guess the most important breakthrough was this seminal, legendary research paper from Google Research, which we nowadays know as the Transformers paper. The real title is Attention is All You Need. And what it really changed in AI research is that it gave these machine learning algorithms a longer attention span. They used to have a really short attention span, and simply by expanding the attention span, we launched a revolution which ended to generative AI. So what does that mean? What, what is generative AI? Sounds like a complex word, but it, what, what it really means is, is that it can generate things. You show an algorithm enough content, and then it can generate content like that like text, sound, images. You can also turn it the other way around. Once you've trained the algorithm, you can show it content and it will recognize it. This text is German. This text is French. This person is a person. This is a cat. So let's take an example, a prompt. Give me an image a detailed and realistic image of Batman walking in Helsinki in deep snow. It's snowing heavily, sun is setting. Real test, I did this a week ago. First result, no modifications. Here. This is mid-journey 5.1. The only change I did was that I rerun the test and asked for aspect ratio 16.9 so I can fit it on the slide right here. But look at the quality. Of course, the algorithm has seen tens of thousands of images of Batman, and it has seen Helsinki city streets and snow. But the detail is just amazing. It is generative AI showing its true power. And of course, you can repeat this. Instead of Batman, let's have Elon Musk. Instead of Elon Musk, let's have Donald Trump. It's quite remarkable. But then you can start combining technologies. So you can take images of anything. Let's take photos of me. Combine that with other type of media, like cartoons. And it, then it will make a cartoon, Mikko. 
And importantly here, this is not a filter. There was no photo in the origin material where I was posing like this or looking at the camera like this. It just learned my face and then made a cartoon out of it. Or let's take the same images and images of Barbie and Ken. What do we get now? Well, what do you think? We get Mikko Ken. <laughs> All right, that's fun. How about if we take images of Scott, Amy and Pep? Then we end up with Scott as Ken, Amy as Barbie, and Pep as Pep. <laughs> I'm not even sure which one is real and which one is generated. <laughs> the resemblance is, is uncanny. And of course, you can do it with anything else, like voice or sound. Here in Finland, of course, let's try to make some heavy metal. You could use Music LM from Google. I'm using here Splash Pro. It's not going to win an Emmy anytime soon, but it's not bad. And definitely you can already use this as an inspiration if you're a musician to come up with some new riffs. But as you might notice, there was no voice or singing there. Can we do that? Well, I guess we can. I'll show you an example from a YouTube channel called There I Ruined It. I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. Life in plastic, it's fantastic. You can brush my hair. Undress me everywhere Oh, come on Barbie, let's go party Cause I'm in a Barbie world What can I say? I'm sorry <laughs> So the real question is Is this okay? The images I took, for example, my images, were taken by photographers, humans. They had a copyright. I uploaded them to an engine and I ended up with an image of myself, which is licensed under Creative Commons 4.0. You could print it on a t-shirt and sell it, and that would be fine. Is that okay? Is it okay that we take Johnny Cash, his voice, maybe his likeness, and turn it into something else? These are big questions, and we still don't really seem to have the answers. Clearly, we're benefiting greatly from this revolution. I guess a big part of us is using tools like ChatGPT already, and we, we, we really get benefit out of them. But the materials which have been used to teach them, that's a little bit muddy. Clearly, the solution isn't to ban these new technologies either. We really still have discussions to do around this. So what does this mean to you? Well, let's look at the most successful companies which have been using AI so far. If you look at the, the biggest players, the frontier AI companies, you end up with, well, OpenAI, which is now aligned with Microsoft, Anthropic, which is now aligned with Amazon, TikTok from China, from ByteDance, and then Google or Alphabet and Facebook or Meta. And Facebook and Meta and TikTok are great examples of companies which have had huge monetary benefits already from AI. The biggest benefit they've been reaping so far is the recommendation engines inside Instagram, inside TikTok, or inside YouTube. This is the reason when you watch a video on YouTube, it recommends you another video which you do want to watch or you stay on Instagram or TikTok for hours and hours, they keep you glued to your screen because their algorithms learn what you like, turning us all into slaves and doom scrollers, but also generating massive amounts of money for these companies. So how can you do something like that? Do you want to do something like that? Well, you're not Google or TikTok, or most of us aren't. 
But we do things that will be automated in the future. And there's no point in delaying this revolution. Companies which ignore this revolution will have the same fate as companies which ignored the internet revolution. So there are companies already which are reaping the benefits. One company I worked with is building sales automation, which means they scrape through public databases and use that to find opportunities and turn that into sales opportunities, actually writing email openers in different languages. My favorite detail is that this AI actually sells itself by looking for recruitment ads for salespeople and answering those ads on its own behalf. Hi, I'm an AI, I'm applying for this job. Another company I've worked with is building AI security, very much like what we do in cybersecurity, looking for anomalies in network traffic, except they're not looking for anomalies on computers. They're looking for anomalies in real world. They look at um, doors, access control systems, elevator traffic, lifts, meeting room reservations, and they look for anomalies, like why is this person taking this route, going to this place where he's never been before, and this is a funny hour. This is weird. It might not mean that there's something criminal or bad going on, but they do know there's something weird going on. These are very powerful technologies. Or what about, what about you personally? There's one thing to build new opportunities for your companies, but how can you work better with these new technologies? Playing with images and sound is fun and all that, but one thing I do a lot is that I read a lot. White papers, research, and I always don't have the time to do it. So what do I do now? Well, I go to engines like Claude from Anthropic, one of the frontier AI companies. What makes Claude a little bit different is that you can take a PDF and paste it in there. Hey, Claude, read through this PDF file and give me a summary. And it will read it through in one second, seriously. Regardless of the length, it immediately reads it through and it gives you a summary. How good are the summaries? They're perfect. How do I know? Because I've tested it by uploading my own texts, my own research, my own white papers, and it gets the gist. It understands the key points. Always. I haven't had it fail yet. Also useful is that you don't have to ask the summary in the language that the paper was written in. You can now ask in any language, and you can get it in the language you prefer. Now, as in any technological revolutions, we have upsides and we have downsides. The risks coming out of these things are also very real. We've already seen rogue versions of generative large language models. Engines like Worm GPT, Black GPT, Rogue GPT. Now, they sound like these would be based on ChatGPT, but they're not. ChatGPT and BART are closed source. You can't download them. Same thing with Claude. But then we do have large language models like JPTJ and GPT, um, oh, sorry, Llama from Facebook, which you can actually just go to GitHub and download. And we have bad actors out there which have downloaded these large language models and removed all safety and security restrictions. You can use these engines to write phishing emails or malware today. That's bad. Another thing which is bad is that we already have money-making deepfake criminal attacks. This is a video of Elon Musk posted on X. Hi. My friend got an idea of cryptocurrency exchange, and now he's product entering the world market on June 7th. He offers the best conditions on the market and an opportunity to get some crypto for free. It's your chance. Go to bitrelex.com and get your bonus. Do not go to bitrelex.com to get your bonus. This is a scam. Clearly, we will see worst, the worst examples of this happening. There will be CEO scams where the CFO is going to get a Teams call from the chairman or from the CEO asking to change some account numbers or add a new client into the database. It looks and sounds like the boss, acts in real time, but it's not. Now, we haven't seen this yet. There's lots of 
anecdotes and uh, news stories about how this has already happened, but we haven't had a single case which we could actually prove was like this. It might have happened, but if it has happened, we don't have, have evidence of it. But it's quite clear that technology exists. And if it hasn't happened yet, it will. And artificial intelligence will be able to find completely unknown zero-day vulnerabilities. This is going to happen in the near future. And that's great. That's excellent. I love it. It's also awful. It's great when you are trying to find security vulnerabilities from your own code, from your own product, so you can fix them. It's awful when someone else is using this technology to find security vulnerabilities from your code so they can misuse them. Great and awful at the same time. That's the thing which applies to technology revolutions always. So what's going to happen in the more distant future. As we've heard here on NBF stage this year, there are serious risks and people are forecasting human extinction or utopia. Seems like we only have two options. It's going to be awful or it's going to be great. And we don't really know how it's going to play out. The average IQ for us is 100. That's how IQ chart have been built. The average IQ is 100. And we now have people confidently claiming what's going to happen in the future. Man with a 100 IQ confidently declaring what's going to happen in 20 years when we are facing a billion IQ AI. Of course, we won't know what it looks like. It could be either way. What we know now for a fact that the world where we are living right now is very exciting and very scary. Thank you very much. I'm not sure if you know, but Mikko, Mikko used to be in our board of directors for three years. We have a wonderful story and a history together. We brought, uh, we brought Barack Obama Barack to Obama, yes. That was as an example. the highlights of my uh, board membership in, in NBF. This is such a great place to be. Hey, I picked a question from Slido. When I came out, it was on the top. It was about the, well, you have, written, you, have, uh, you have had a book on, on the internet revolution and now, now AI revolution. What could be, what's your bet on the next revolution? What should all the business leaders here in the audience uh, be, be conscious of? Where should they have their radar? Mm -hmm. Any thoughts? Well, it could be quantum. Quantum is very similar in technology to AI in the sense that we've been writing and reading about quantum computers almost as long as about AI, for decades. It seems to be a forever promise which always moves a little bit beyond to where we are today. But clearly, we're getting closer to reality. There's a quantum computer factory five kilometers from where we are right now, right there in the center of Otaniemi. They are actually building and selling quantum computers as we speak. They are still a little bit too weak to be used for general purpose computing, but it could happen. And that would totally skyrocket everything we saw regarding generative AI. We could combine quantum technologies with these machine learning systems. When would that happen? That's the hard question. I'm not going to make any forecasts on that. Question on when will we see superhuman, self-aware AI technologies is a similar question, and I've gone on the record forecasting that I think it's going to happen during my lifetime. That's the closest I'm willing to guess. Mikko, has been a historic moment with you here. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.